Hey there. I I am here with my team. Hello. Hello. Hey. And we're going to be designing our next group training program. So I thought I'd share the love, wealth, and knowledge that I've accumulated over the past seven years doing this for various populations. Okay, so what we're going to factor in, okay, first is going to ask questions and not just me talking to a camera. So yeah. I, I've, got, I've got to take care of them too at the same time as you learn. All right, so the things you're looking for is am I hitting all my movement patterns? Okay, within that muscular fatigue. What's the goal? Usually the, for group training, the way we like to do is focus on heart rate. Okay. Uh, logistics. That includes equipment available, space, ability level, skill level. Okay. Uh, some other things we want to think about are modifications, right? Okay, so like this morning, 
We worked as hard as we could. In my mind, I was thinking 10 to 30 seconds at the time. They work hard enough, and I see they need, they need recovery. I give it to them. If I see they didn't really push that hard, we cut it to cut it down. And it's cool because it allows you to be creative as a coach, have more engagement, more interaction, but not to the point where you're doing the thing with them and you're not really keeping the coach in that. Okay? A lot of people believe, like body pump, where the freaking instructor does the same thing with them at the same time. I think that's completely wrong. And you know, even if you're talking athletic population, special population, reason being, because you know, even my form breaks, and I've been training for 10 plus years. So I'd rather put ourselves in a position to lead, you coach and serve, versus just have good energy. Because you can have good energy and drive and leadership without taking away from the ability to cue, correct, and adjust and serve. Okay. So any questions on that? Okay. Um, I've done different things for partner these as well. So an example of this, A would do, uh, let's see, 15 reps, and partner B does time dependent on them doing the 15 reps. So let's say uh, two of you are partners, your partner A, your partner B, you might have to do uh, 15 squat to wall ball tosses, and you're doing mountain climbers until she's done. After she does her 15, Swap places, you'd hit your 15 and choose it now and climber. That can work really well. The challenges you're going to face, uh, different ability levels. It can be a little bit funky on the logistic side. If someone needs to elevate their burpees or modify the wall ball tosses, it might take them two to three times as long. Okay, that's why, I like, uh, a lot of times, even during a warm up essay, you know, don't give them specific reps always because it makes it very one dimensional. If I move it twice the range of you, I'm going to be standing there bored out of my mind while you're still doing the thing. Versus on the flip side of the partner based workout, you might be like exhausted because your partner's taking twice as long. You know, so we want to make it uh, uh, adaptable to everyone. See? So it's, it's, it's interesting if you really think about it because it's very complex. It's, sim it's simple, but the actual effective execution is very complex. Because I've taken groups of populations where you'll have someone that has arthritis in the knees, they can't squat below parallel. The uh, shoulders are tight, they can't press overhead, uh, they have a bad ankle, uh, you name it, they can't do it that exercise. And they're working out side by side with someone that runs marathons and has done you know, bodybuilding or whatever. Like, you need to be able to create an effective workout and a great experience for both of them at the same time. And that's where all this ties together. Okay, so let's create our first workout. We got the nodes. Mm -hmm. Write that down for me. Yeah. See if our friends have any questions. Agree about BP. I'm not sure what that means, but I love it. All right, cool. Agree about BP. Blood pressure? Maybe. Rebecca, back up. You're still listening. What is? What do you mean by BP? Post that in the comments for me. Right, we're clean this guy off. All right, so let's start. Let's start. What? How do we want to structure the workout? Give me. We have our three or four different structures. I'll let you pick the first one. Okay, AMRAP. Cool. So, so we'll do uh, section A. We'll do. Want me to write that here? Yes. So fill this in as we go. Okay. All right. So section A. Let's start off, so remember, keep in mind, we've gone through the five, ten minutes, that ends warm up. Now they are uh, fresh, right? So they're no muscular fatigue. They're at the peak of their energy. So this is where we're probably going to want to stack the longer bouts of exercise versus one that fatigues and they can't get the same intensity. Because the goal is, if this is, you know, time, and this is intensity, we want them to get as high here and create this as much as possible. Problem is, as time goes on, he kicks in, so the same rate of perceived exertion isn't going to be as effective later in the workout, right? So we want to stack the time, actual time, work time, where they can sustain that high intensity, because it's going to look like that over time. Here, it's going to be shorter bouts, 
but they're still going to be able to get up to that 70, 90%. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So just some things that are going through my head. Okay. So let's go 40, 20. Okay. We'll decide on how many exercises we want to do. We can, there's no wrong or right way to do this. There's multiple right ways, but there's no wrong way to do this. Four. Four. Okay. So one, two, three, and four. So let's keep in those some of the factors that we're looking at. Let's write could you um could you write on the side here all those little factors that we're looking at? So like uh, just read them off to them. Like time, logistics, things like that. This is what our friends are saying. I'm having a hard time hearing. I hope you can hear me. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah? Uh, movement patterns. Movement patterns. Muscular fatigue. So basically, we want our little cheat sheet here on the side. This is on, on so, teaching them how we design a workout program effectively. Uh, so we're gonna we're basically dissecting and re-engineering how to design an effective experience that gets a great result for your your, your members. Or if you're one of our members, this is the voodoo that happens on the back end. And then variety slash fun. It's like our checklist on the yeah. side almost. Okay. Cool. So um, do that back to you. All right. So you're right. So, uh, so we have time. So uh, what we're gonna look at first one? How much time do we have? Okay, we're doing four exercises. Two ways to do. I recommend we either go three times or four times. Okay, four times is 16 minutes, so it breaks our time rule, but it's intervals. So I find that when we do uh, not AMRAP, but do you, did you say AMRAP or did you want to do intervals? Uh, I had AMRAP. Okay, so we're doing AMRAP. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll still go with four exercises. So in wrap, let's keep it ten minutes. Or twelve, since we're starting out fresh. Okay. Okay. So question for our trainer. Alright. When we're designing a workout program, do we get more benefit if we go high intensity, aka 80-90% load at the start of the workout, or when we're fatigued and tired? Exactly. Right. So we're not going to hit 80 to 90, but we want to be hitting a higher intensity. Okay. So by that, I mean reps. This is a heart rate based interval training program. We want to focus on lower reps to start. So we'll go 80 times. Okay. So time makes sense, right? Check. Uh, now we're going to go into the movement patterns. Fatigue and logistics of the point needed. Okay. So first we have uh, let's say squatting is a fantastic way to start. We'll keep it simple for this one. We're gonna gobble squat. Okay. Uh, during the workout, we'll modify that. Uh, deep squat if needed. Okay. Or air squat, best in five. Okay. But what did we just factor in there? Already got modification. We're starting movement patterns. We see how everything's kind of tying together now. And we'll go back through it. Okay. Alright, so we got the squat first. So we squat, we got a push, we got a pull, right? So maybe we'll do a TR throw. So we want fun and variety with a pause. Okay, so one one second pause. And everyone should be able to do the TRX throughout. Uh, if there's session not being an issue. So we squat, we pull, uh, we can push, lunge, or we can uh, go into maybe a core exercise and then heart rate. Okay, so let's say we do a core. So we do a plank. Now we can't do eight reps of plank, so maybe we can do 30 seconds. Right? Clock's running, so so logistics, it's easy, right? If that clock's running down 10 minutes, everyone's working at their own pace through this, what do they have to do to do a 30 second plank? Pick the two eyes, peek up, okay, 10 or eight minutes, 
perfect, I've done it done here. And it, it makes it flow. The last thing you want to do is set it up where people are asking questions and you'll kind of work out. Okay. Applying 30 seconds. Remember, what's our overall goal? What's our goal of this workout, really? Heart rate. Heart rate. So they'll get trained benefit, you know. Uh, what we can do here? No, I'm fine. Now, this is not perfect. But let's look at what we have set up here, okay? So we squat. Then we go into a pull. And then we go into a plank. Forward. And then we go into mountain climbing. What's the one thing that I could I could probably change or improve? If you look at, I'll give you a hint. It's muscular fatigue. Do you need a push? Yeah. Do you need a push? It's pushing in the third. Think about the muscles getting fatigued right now. Still like well, I feel like after the plank, the mountain climbers will be like. Well, that's exactly where my head is. Right? Now, is it the end of the world to leave it? No, and if our members are watching this, they're probably like, <laughs> so, I could probably leave this, it's not, because remember, we're not trying to get like maximal mountain climbers or like a max, the 30 second climb and mountain climbers, but like, you have to keep in mind, if this is there's five exercises, if I did a overhead shirt press or push ups here, and then we went to this climb, that would be more of an issue, because that's a higher risk. Like, no one would probably hurt themselves beating their shoulders doing the plank, and then going into mountain climbing, it's just probably not going to happen. But if they had to do overhead presses, they push the weight a little too heavy, they would see here, they would see here, second round, third round. See, that's that's where your head's got to be at. So are the mountain climbers for 30 seconds also, or is it a number so of we'll go eight each. And that's one of the reasons why we're going to leave it, because eight reps each leg, eight reps each leg is, is going to be quick enough, but it's not going to fatigue them. Are they going to be fresh when they come back to their squat, as far as much as Yes. All right, the good question is going to be a little fire, but make sense? Okay, so prime makes sense, right? Logistics of equipment, we're not going to have everyone trying to use the same thing at once, right? And also during these workouts as a coach, we're going to want to say, if T-Rex is not available, what do you do? You want the next thing, and then you come back to it. Okay, so logistics makes sense. I like going with minimal equipment as much as possible. All right, so make sure. There we go. Um, would you would you stagger the group if you had if you knew that you might not have enough PRI? I'd start them in different places, yeah, I but I'd also keep that role in place. You know, some it's here. Here is the only limiting factor here. So I'd say if it's being used, come back around. You'll get it's only eight reps, but so you should be going to go. Okay. Um, and that plank is going to throw off time lag enough on people kicking and starting. All right. Uh, movement patterns. How we hit. Some of our core movement patterns that are complementary or non non fatigue. Okay? Fatigue, how we address that, we're aware, but it's not going to be a limiting factor. Alright? Uh, it's going to get our heart rate up, right? Why? And, and you're going from up, uh, well, I, especially from like squats to like planks, you're going up and down, and so you're really. And that's the purpose of that. Yeah. Right? Because it's sometimes we're. Uh, running a group training program. It, remember, there's some exercises that require more skill, coordination, uh, stability. So, like, if you had everyone doing, like, single leg RDLs, they have to, like, reset and then switch right. to another leg. Their heart rate might not get up. So, you gotta, like, that's when I, if I did a single, which we might do the next part, if I did, like, single leg RDLs here, I'd probably do, like, burpees to pair with that. Because yep. one's not gonna get the same type of intensity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, modifications have we addressed pretty much any. Okay, so C squats or goblet squats, these are things we just need to know as coaches as we go. Here's row, probably not going to run into an issue. Plank, what would we do? We, we would elevate the plank to a higher surface, maybe. Okay, I'm not going to write that down. Now I'm the same thing. We would just come up higher versus getting lower. Okay, so part B, let's keep the same theme. Uh, let's go 10 minutes. Now, we hit eight reps for the first part, so what are options? 10, maybe 12 reps, we can even go up to 15, okay? So let's say 12 seconds. Okay. We can go, okay, so here's the thing. We can go with four exercises. It's simple enough. Two, two ways to look at it. Simple enough that they'll remember it, 
but at the same time, the board's right here. So this is going to be in front of them if they need to. We just want to remember we want fun and experience. That's an important factor. So it could be the perfect workout, but if they're having a terrible time or they're like thinking half the time what they're doing, they're not going to enjoy it. Okay. So uh, we can go five exercises, but we want it to be simple enough and that it flows, and that's where logistics come in. Come, logistics and skill comes into play too. Okay. So. We said our squat pattern will start there. What's a good way? That, what's one of the many ways we can do to start our our B? Hinge. Hinge. Let's do a hinge pattern. So give me an exercise. RDL. RDL. Beautiful. Okay. All right. What's another one? We we push hold already. So what do we want to do this time? Probably push. Push. Okay. So I may maybe a tier and push up. I'm not the biggest fan of doing overhead presses during group training program. I feel like we should save that for strength training. So I would make it a combination exercise. So I'd do like a squat press. But that's almost more of a metabolic heart rate based exercise. Both are right. Neither one of those are wrong options. Both are correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you just got to pick a squat. So some people might just get bored standing there. Okay, you got to look at the overall picture. We'll go back to it. Okay. Let's do TRX push ups. What am I thinking about already with this? Two things. Logistics, modification, because if someone has a shoulder injury, right? What what do we need to do? Probably need to just have them pull. Simple. Nine times out of ten, pulling is gonna serve them if they have a shoulder issue, injury, whatever it may be. Okay? Um, logistics of equipment. Once again, we're gonna coach them. That's what we're becoming in coaches and communicating, and it's being used as we want. Okay? Simple. Alright, what's next? We're going four exercises. That's another thing we could do. So what patterns haven't we hit? Yeah, I think hit like what, core, the core. Core and core we hit plank. Yeah, yeah, so oh, the well. first block. We'll go five exercises this time. Okay. What's uh, another move pattern? So we have squat, hinge, push, or pull, push, press. press. Press, I'd say same. I, I'm not gonna double down. Okay. okay. Press, um, press is a pushing motion. I look at the same category. Do like lateral stuff. Single leg. Yeah. Single leg. That can be lunge. Uh, so I've learned from Alan Cosgrove that, that name rings a bell. Uh, they are performed better. That's the whole. So we have idea health and fitness. They do a lot of conferences. Perform better than others. Uh, Cosgrove refers to it as uh, the movement pattern. I don't know if they do this in, in your study. Uh, Single leg and then uh, like balance work, right? So, like a single leg RDL, you can almost call that like a single leg pattern and balance pattern. Uh, so, another category lunge. So, I look at a single leg as one pattern, and lunge is the other. Okay, so with this, I want to pick one or the other. Now, single leg RDL, is that going to require more technical skill than a lunge? Probably. Yeah. Yes. Here's, the, here's what's interesting. Watch this. So, Let's say alternating lunges. Lunges reverse. Should be like backwards. Okay. Um, how many do we want each leg? We have 10 minutes. We could probably afford to go 12 each leg. What's the benefit of that? What's it going to get us? Right. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. So we've gone 6 each leg and heavier. That's another right way to do it. Okay. Now, what's something that we're not thinking about straight away right here? What if someone has any issues? What do we need? Uh, mm -hmm. And what's the best go-to thought? What's the, if if knee hurts from squat depth or knee flexion, where do we want to go to straight away? How do you mean? Well, if the flexion is giving problems. Hip pain. Yeah. So theory pain. Yep. So immediately go hip dominant. Yep. Okay? So that's where we can modify single leg RDL. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's a little more technical, but risk reward. I'd rather spend I'd rather than get less of a heart rate uh, I'd rather than get less of a heart rate calorie burn, but not be in joint pain. 
Right, but you're not thinking two RDLs from the same. Well, I mean, it's different it's because it's balanced. It's a single leg. Yeah, it's a single right. leg. And they're not going to be under the same load of tension as, like, this is this is going to be different. But it's only one way to do it. So if you're if you're worried about that person, maybe they have, you know, a tender back or their core is kind of weak. Something else you could do. You could do donkey kicks or uh, single leg bridges. But you got to think. If we're trying to get their heart rate up. Is it really going to serve them to lay on their back, position themselves, mm -hmm. do a single leg bridge, or grip onto a pole, take a load, and start working that single leg hip, assuming they can move well? I'd probably go that route. Both are correct. Does that make sense? No, Depends no. on the person. So if you had Cindy in here, because you know she's got really tender knees, I probably it would probably serve her better. To work, go straight in the class setting, to go straight to the single leg bridge, then try to master the single leg RDL in that time period. Okay. So, when you core work now, what's a good core exercise? Hollow rock. Hollow rock. And if they can't do a hollow rock, what do we do to hollow? Uh, we could do a hold. Yeah. Hollow body hold. Ooh, okay. Okay. Um, and how long? Remember, because it's time. Pretty simple. Just one way to do it. Okay. Now, what, the harvest is probably up already, but let's just complete the, the puzzle. So, what else can we do here? What do you want to do to get the heart rate up? Derby. Derby! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. The answer is always work. One in doubt. Always work. <laughs> and that's you know, implied as a coach, you should know, bring them up higher, or if they can't handle impact, step it versus top it. Simple? Mm -hmm. Okay. Part C. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking too. Nice. So we spent 10 minutes warming up. We might have started five minutes late, right? If the group was chatty or there was an announcement. So we're 15 minutes in. Uh, really good for 15 minutes just to set up an explanation. So it's 30, 45 minutes. We have up to 15 minutes left. We want to get a little bit stretched in. So, Part C. Um, what's what are a few options? Give me one or two options from our list. We could A. I'll give one. We can keep the uh, AMRAP. That's one. Give me two more options. Do uh, partner. Partner and set the end. Partner or set the interval so I have it shorter. Interval have it shorter. Any ideas? Create block. Create a creative block. Yep, so all three of those are right. That's the whole part. And if honestly, if like the lesson plan is set for one thing, you look at the clock, or you just you get a different vibe from the group. That's where you become creative as a coach and you feed off of that, and you get a new look and do that, right? So don't feel restricted to this. Because sometimes I'll throw out the lesson plan halfway through and change it up. Okay. Uh, let's. I'm gonna go for this one with a partner challenge at the end. Okay. Really reinforce community, team building. Okay. The partner challenge. Now, partner challenge. I find that if it's like two completions, creates two challenges within that. Okay. It might take a group longer than expected, so it's kind of awkward because the other half of the room is done. They're just kind of sitting there exhausted, and have two people still work. So it's not fun. Okay. So put a time cap. Six minutes. And you gotta do two completion, which I don't recommend. Or you can do uh, time block. So we, we're taking two concepts and putting them into one. A time block, but it's structured with the AMRAP part and count. See how that ties together? Okay. So we'll do we'll keep it simple, right? The logistics and time. Okay, they have six minutes of work, we want them spending three of those trying to remember what they're doing next. No. So uh, for one, say, partner A will have them do, um, remember, rep base for one, and then until it's their turn for two, right? So for this, let's do um, medicine ball, squat, wall ball toss, all right? Okay. I will do 15 of them, right? And partner B is going to do, uh, they're going to squat here, 
it had to do with kind of all string audio. It's, it's 16 uh, slots and 16 wall costumes. It's all one movement. So that's what oh, yeah, dot and then toss. Right. Right. And number two, just to keep it simple, okay, uh, we can do partner A, partner B. What's a good rest state exercise we can do? Rough base exercise for a partner challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, we do uh, push my bows. Second, we get the heart rate up in short period of time. Yeah. Um, we do my knees. My knees, good. Yep. So that can be either. That yeah. can be. Uh, do we want the person to suffer, or do we want them to feel? Because if, if that's the rest goal based exercise, mm -hmm. then it might be a little more rewarding up here. For Frank versus high knees. So if you're just doing high knees and tell your partner you've done it, it can be a switch to the off. So we'll do high knees. I'm going to do 50 each. I won't take what you want. Uh, partner D, what's the one that you're going to do? What was the third one? I don't know, maybe this is wrong. I was just saying, because high knees won't take too, too long. So they could do like a plank, and then instead of having like 30 seconds, and then I'm done, they'll be holding it. And that, from the time, is so great. Hope that helps. That's going to be recorded, and I'll figure out how to download it. Cool. Yeah. One out of six workouts are done. So um, the way we'll do this. Thanks for joining, guys.